Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.O. Combs at uh, Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is January 4th, 2019. And I hope everyone had a great new year. We did. We had sort of a relaxing time. As you know, from last week's video, we were up in the mountains for a few days uh, uh, enjoying the snow. And we're back in the offices now and uh, getting ready to uh, get things done um, as, as, as we move along into the new year. Um, one of the th a couple of things I want to go over a little, a little uh, uh, notice about some of the changes and things we've been doing on the site that you might find interesting. Um, one of the things we've done, as you know, we have a, uh, a page if you, if you go over to uh, uh, the uh, 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 marketplace page over here. Uh, there it is. There's this page, eBay Today Auctions, okay? And if you click on that, it's going to bring you over to here. And this is a page we set up uh, for during the week. If you're out looking around at things, we update this page with new stuff every day, okay? And we're going to put this link here with uh, Goofy um, over on the uh, newsletter page uh, as a reminder. Um, we This thing gets uh, updated every morning, and we include in there things that will end up in the newsletter. Some things that don't, some things that we set aside for the newsletter, but a lot of things we do include, and we've changed the uh, the way that the page uh, displays and the templates and so forth, make it easier to go through. And uh, there's a lot of stuff on here, and it's all stuff we've looked at and checked out as we do with everything we put on. We try to do our very best at vetting uh, material that comes on and as you can see there's a lot on here uh, right now and uh, all of this will be available through a link um, if you come over and every day you can check it out and see what see if there's something on here that you you might have missed okay we're pretty good at finding things as most of you know and uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, here um, over on the Catawiki page um, we have changed it significantly uh, by using um, some, uh, uh, some technology we, we had actually developed uh, by a company for us so that we could display more and get uh, faster access. And we found the pages were loading too slowly before these pages load very quickly. There's no delay, and uh, I hope you like it. All righty. Um, there's always a way to do things if you really want to, I guess. And uh, we want to get that done. Okay, now over here um, on eBay. There's not a lot of stuff to go through on eBay. As I mentioned last week, it was sort of a quiet week due to the Christmas holiday and the New Year holiday. But there were some good things up, and uh, this was one of them. It was a very nice uh, uh, bowl um, uh, that was uh, in Famille Rose that a seller had up. Beautiful example, nice looking Jai Jing Mark and Period Bowl. This was Arthur Potts had this um, out in uh, 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 the UK. He's over in Dorset. Nice looking bowl. And it did pretty well. It brought $2,998, which is right about where it should have should have landed. Uh, very pretty bowl, a mold, one of these molded porcelains. And then, uh, of course, all hand decorated. It had uh, dragons and chimeras on it and so forth. Nice looking example. He had another bowl, too, we'll get to in a minute. And uh, on to this. This was nice. This was, if, if you follow China trade stuff, this is a, a, a carved uh, um, a sandalwood or cinnabar uh, card case uh, for, for business cards, calling cards back in the day is what they were used for because they didn't really have business cards per se. People carried calling cards. And uh, they did them either in, uh, in wood or ivory, most typically uh, in the uh, 1820s to 1880s, somewhere in there. And this was a nice one, nice, nice looking example. It had a good color to it. It. Um, and uh, it did pretty well. It brought uh, $142. Uh, these obviously bring a lot less than the ivory examples. But if you like Chinese wood carvings, these are fun to collect because they had a, a, always have a wide variety of scenes. No two were ever alike that I've ever seen. They're all slightly different. And um, they're not awfully expensive, which is a great thing because uh, so much in the Chinese art world is expensive these days. But there are lots of categories that are, uh, you know, un, 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 underutilized or undercollected. And this is one of them. Okay. I like that. All right. And then on to this. It was a nice looking pair of uh, cloisonne uh, tatsas, um, elevated bowls for serving, offering, sometimes they call them offering dishes. And uh, these were uh, in uh, blue with black interiors. They were probably made in the mid 19th century. Nice looking, nice looking examples, and uh, they did pretty well. They they call this guy called them stem cups. They're not really, but it's close enough. And uh, they brought four hundred and forty eight dollars, which was a perfectly good price for these. These are uh, interesting because it's a pair, and usually one of them has been tipped over and got given a big dent by now, and you only have one. It's nice to get pairs, and um, these were these were quite well done. Uh, good quality decoration. They had some wear to them. I think they'd clean up beautifully. You can clean these up without uh, damaging them. 
All righty. And then on to this. It was a framed rank badge. This was rather nice. I thought this was a nice little package. The the frame and stand appear to be probably early 20th century from what I can see. The, the detail of the work, the carving, maybe done in the 20s or something like that. But nice looking uh, a badge. It's all framed up right there. And uh, look at this. It went for $160, which I thought was really reasonable. Um, came out of a, a, a dealer in Pennsylvania had this. I think that was one of the real bargains of the week. I thought that was a terrific buy. All right. And uh, moving on to this was the little jade Kuan Yin on a, on a carved lotus with a jade base. Uh, nice looking example. About, as you can see, three and a half inches tall. Pretty good quality. Looked to have some decent age to it. Uh, probably early 19th century to mid 19th century. And it went for $690, which I thought was very reasonable. This was a seller that we follow. He's an antique dealer in Cumberland, Rhode Island. And their seller name is Woolwurst. And uh, they, they carry a lot of stuff. They handle a lot of material. Um, they sell Western things, uh, you know, uh, uh, American things, European things. They're general line antique dealers. And um, uh, th they always seem to come across a few good Chinese things from time to time. And th this was uh, one of them. They're good dealers, by the way. All right. And then on to this. This was that big Kutani um, winged dragon jar I mentioned last week that I liked in particular. That was a very nice example. This was a big pot. It was 18 inches tall, um, uh, had a, a nice looking uh, Kutani mark on the bottom, uh, the flattened base as you often see on these 19th century examples. Um, and they, they, they did these flattened bottoms mainly because they would they would gave strength to the base and they would stand up better. All right, and uh, they, the Japanese did this quite a lot. It had a it had a brief line, uh, a couple of little parallel lines here in the rim, but nothing too distracting. But this was a big one. Katani pieces typically aren't this big, so this was a good one and beautifully decorated. I thought, and it did pretty well. It brought nine hundred and ten dollars. Um, and as you know, Japanese stuff has been sort of on the outs with um, the high end collectors for a while, just just uh, because it's not Chinese, and um, I happen to like Japanese things a great deal. Um, so I think. I think this was a fabulous buy. I think this was a nice buy for a good big piece of quality Katani. Good looking piece. All right. Of course, with Katani things, you also, Japanese things, you don't have the, the non payment problem that you have with Chinese things. So it's, you know, if you get something Japanese, don't be afraid to put it up. All right. And then we get on to this. This very nice, um, um, incise decorated uh, a bowl with these round owls of, uh, of different uh, precious objects and vases and so forth. This was also from Arthur Potts. Here's a picture of the interior. It was done in underglazed blue. Really nice quality piece. It had the Guan mark on the bottom. And it did well also. Uh, it brought a little less than the other one. This one brought uh, $1,713. But a good example. And uh, did just fine. Okay. Liked it. And then on to this was that uh, piece of badly photographed early cloisonne with a cover, okay? This is the guy that for some reason thought he should weigh it. Um, here's a picture of the interior. It was splashed in gilt. Here's a picture of the bottom, the lid. Here's another picture of the lid. Sure, he provided a lot of pictures, but he just didn't take very good pictures. It was a little bit of wear on the inside, which is normal. Here's another picture of the top. I guess he liked the top a lot. Um, and uh, it ended up selling for $2,461, all right? And I do suspect this, this had a tray or some sort of uh, stand that it fitted into, but it was a nice early one, uh, probably for ritualistic use, and um, did well, 2461 bucks, no problem. Shows that even with bad pictures, you can still get money, but I think he would have done perhaps better had he taken a little more care in his photography. All right, and then on to this, the jade fish plaque that was fitted into a, a sort of interesting little ghee type or crackle glaze uh, uh, box. Um, here it is, all right. The box was sort of damaged, but it was a nice old ivory carving, okay. This is a nice looking, I mean, nice old jade carving with uh, fish and, and uh, dragonflies and all this other stuff and, and, and plants, aquatic plants sweeping through it. And um, it did pretty well. It brought $2,892, okay. I'm not sure it was Ming. Uh, he said he felt it was Ming. I think that was his opinion of it. It was nicely done. I think it was probably a Qing example. But nonetheless, it was a good-looking piece of jade and, uh, and well-carved. And, and these are hard to date. These are hard to date. All right. And then on to this. This was that uh, big chair cover that I was so fond of last week with the elephant on it. This was, a, it was that long strip. Uh, these are always pretty good size, and these chair covers are fairly rare just because they got worn out. Um, they were sat on a lot, and uh, especially when guests came to visit. 
Um, they would sit on them and they would wear through them and they just got tossed after after a generation. And this was a good quality one. It was beautifully done, um, a very st a very uh, strong stylistic and motif on it. Had a minor split here. This was probably on an edge somewhere of the ch where it would have been on a chair or where somebody's butt went. But anyway, this was a nice thing, and uh, it did well. It brought $4,162, which was about in the range we sort of thought it would go, as we mentioned last week. It was in the in the two two thousand three thousand dollar range um, a week ago. Uh, it closed on the thirty first on New Year's Eve, uh, on Monday, and uh, it did popped up at the end. It jumped it jumped about fifteen hundred eighteen hundred bucks, but landed right about on the money as far as I can tell. All right. And then on to this. This was something I meant to put in. This was in the newsletter two weeks ago, but it hadn't closed on Friday when we did the video, so I wanted to save it. Um, and this was it. This was that nice-looking silver and enamel um, Chinese export fan with this very expansive landscape, continuous landscape scene um, on terraces of uh, Chinese figures. Uh, you know, uh, people sort of look like they're celebrating some sort of an afternoon. But very nice three-dimensional uh, carving, uh, painting rather, done in the, you know, probably in the 1820s, I would guess, 1830. Uh, but very good quality, okay? And it did fine. It brought $1,443. It had a couple of minor condition issues, but uh, did well. And this is from a seller we follow over in Madrid, Spain, um, who gets nice things. They also sell other fans. Um, occasionally they put, put up a European fan um, that has Oriental uh, decorations on it, and they think it's Chinese or Japanese, it's, but it's, it's just an honest mistake. People make them. All right, and now over to what's coming up this week because there's a lot of stuff um, this week coming up. Uh, there, uh, we saw a big jump in listings um, around the middle of this week and last night uh, uh, in the categories that we follow and how we follow them and the things that we think are okay, and it went up uh, considerably um, uh, when we checked uh, last night and this morning. All right. And uh, one of the things uh, that we've been following was that uh, uh, Chamberlain Antiques, a username Juice1499, uh, put up a sale um, after we did the newsletter. I haven't talked to Josh. I was away. I was, in, as you know, I was away last week. But he had a sale go up, and uh, we caught it on uh, Monday and started putting it, uh, some of the things over on the uh, eBay Today page. Um, and uh, there was this vase came back. Apparently, he, he sold this vase about a month ago, and uh, it, he relisted it, obviously, because it was a non-payment issue. Um, Nice-looking vase. This was the one that has those sort of very unusual sort of lapis blue handles. Nice-looking uh, nice looking example. Um, here's a picture of the base. All right. And uh, it's up to $138. This closes on Monday. All of his things close on Monday. And you want to check it out. We'll have them in the newsletter. But there's a, a number of things in there that are quite nice, in, including this, this beautifully done enamel uh, bowl on porcelain. It almost looks like Beijing enamel, but it's not. It's, a, it's a, um, on porcelain. There it is. It has a, a very nice Dalguan mark on it. And I, I suspect it's of the period. It has, has, a, has a bit of wear to the interior from use, which is normal. But this is a molded bowl. Bowl. You can see see how they shape the rim and so forth, sort of a lotus shape to the rim. It's up to $860. I suspect it'll bring uh, around 2000 or so, uh, maybe a little more. Uh, what size is this thing? Um, seven inches across. Yeah, it's typical size. Nice looking bowl, though. An unusual, unusual example. All right. And he also has this up. It's a nice Ming Dynasty crosshatch uh, 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 vase. Now, these are, these are fairly well-known type. It's a very datable uh, to the early part of the uh, 16th century, um, but, but in the late 15th century. Uh, but nice, nice looking piece. It's got the, exactly the right uh, foot on it that you want to see, that sort of heavy, heavy shaped and hand cut foot. All right. Here's another shot of it. Nice, deep, old crackle, sort of yellowing crackle in the glaze. It's one of the ways you can date these. The, the crackle, when they, f when, they, when, they, when they make fakes of these, they never get the color of, of age in the crackle properly, um, especially on celadons. The celadons have a decided sort of amberish yellow tone in their crackle as they age. And that's one of the little things you can look to um, when you're examining these pieces and also the way the foot is done. And these tend to be quite heavy when you pick them up. It's up to $157, and it, as I said, it closes Monday, all right? And then we came across these. There's a seller over in the U.K. that we've been following that gets interesting small carvings, jades and netskis. And this was a nice little sort of boxwood netski, but has enamel uh, paint decoration on it, which is quite unusual. 
thought this was just great. Great little thing. Um, it's not the best the best one probably he has up. He has some other ones that are quite good too. This is a Hotai figure. But I like the fact that it's uh, paint decorated. I think that's that's a really nice touch. All right, and it's good color. Nice, nice looking example. It's up to $49, and this closes also on Monday of next week. And these will all be in the newsletter, so you don't have to worry about not keeping track. Just get the newsletter and you'll find it. All right, and then there's this uh, chair cover. Uh, nice one, uh, um, nicely woven. Seems to be in pretty good shape all the way around uh, with dragons and so forth. In a central round all in black. It's up to $59. And this is a seller here in Massachusetts. Uh, he uses the name Digger's Studio. And you, we've had him before. He, he has a good eye. He gets good things. And um, this is, as I said, it's up to $59. And this closes uh, a week from today. This, this stuff just went up the other day. All right. And then this. This is a very nice Chinese export, 18th century, Chunlung period uh, pot. Uh, it's got an old legitimate looking collector label on the bottom, but this is a real one. This is a nice looking teapot. All right. And, the, and it heavily gilded. These are those, there's certain ones of these that you see that is very heavily gilded. Um, and it has this pattern that's often associated with sort of the French market, but this very heavy gilding and uh, it, it's all intact pretty much. It is, the, the gilding has very little wear to it, which is a nice feature on these. And uh, it is up to uh, $35. Ought to bring, uh, Probably four to six hundred. Anything anything under four hundred is a great buy for one of these. Nicely shaped, and uh, I like the size of the roundel that they used on this one. All right, and then our friends over at Ceramics and Collectibles in the Netherlands had put this up just recently. It's a uh, really nice Neue Straits hot food pot. Wire handles, great color, um, very vibrant, very very vibrant, and nicely photographed too, and uh, it's doing fine. It's got seven, almost eight days to go, uh, but it's already up to a thousand dollars. This will do well. This is this is a very desirable piece of Noya Straits, and um, or uh, they call it Pyrenaic uh, porcelain. Um, it'll it'll do fine. Okay, it's a nice piece though. If you collect this stuff, this is the one you want to follow. All right, and then on to this. This is a pair, and uh, this is sort of a pattern that sometimes people refer to them as uh, sort of there was a America, there was an export uh, type of plate that was sent to the West. They were called Dewitt Clinton plates. And this is sort of the same pattern. It was somewhat of a stock pattern, but uh, they, this one they have uh, immortals floating around the outer rim above the cavetto, which is kind of nice. I, I, I actually like this better than just regular flowers. All right, having these figures on here. Nice old pair of plates. This one has a slight line in the bottom and that kind of thing um, shows through there. But this is an early plate, Chin Lung period with Immortals, and that, that makes it pretty interesting. All right, and it's only up to 13 bucks. This also closes, uh, this closes on January 13th, but we'll have it in the newsletter. Nice looking thing. This is an Eagle 210, he, he's a regular. All right, and then this. This is a nice. This is this is for somebody who wants to collect Kang Shi things that doesn't have an endless wallet. This is a very nice piece of molded, these swirl decorated Kang Shi uh, uh, plates. It has a, a old break in it, but um, it's probably going to go very reasonably. Um, nice looking example. It's about seven inches in diameter. Here it is. Is the break. All right, but this is that shape. They made these in sizes up to. I had a guy in the in the Midwest that sent me pictures, and both of them were pretty badly damaged, but they were about 18 or 19 inches wide. So they made these in a pretty big range of uh, sizes, all right? And the ones I saw were nearly identical to this. They had come from a New England family that had moved out west many years ago. At any rate, that's uh, a nice looking thing. And it, the opening bid on it is uh, like 30 bucks, okay? So if, if, you, if, you, if you wanna collect some, uh, uh, an interesting piece of Kang Shin, you don't mind an old repair, go for it, all right? And then on to this. This is the same seller that I mentioned earlier that had the uh, the boxwood carving of the Netsky. Here's some nice looking jades up. There's this of a duck, uh, and there's some small boy figures and so forth. And this is probably Ming or early Qing, but very nicely done. And uh, not too dissimilar from some Sung carvings that you see, but I, I don't think it's Sung. Uh, but nicely done. Nicely done little jade duck. And... Um, it's up to $957. It closes on Monday, and I suspect it should bring around two or 3000 um, But it's a, it's a nice example, and if you collect old jades, this is a good one. It looks like good legitimate wear, and the seller um, in the past we followed, and we haven't seen them you know, offering up things that aren't as represented, so um, I suspect this is just fine, and uh, we'll see how it does, all right? 
and that's it for the week. And um, as I said, we're going to be updating the, uh, the that that uh, eBay Today page. We'll add a link. We're going to clean up the link and put it over there on the newsletter page. So if you come back during the week and you want to see what's going on or what to look forward to for the next weekly newsletter, you can just go and look, okay? And uh, don't forget, we do have a Buy It Now page and all that business and uh, so on and so forth, okay? So have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. And we're working on some new videos. Uh, we're wor I'm working on a video on Republican porcelain, and I've pulled together a bunch of images um, from the, some of the big auction houses to talk about it because a number of people emailed me after my comment a week or two ago about, about Republican porcelain and how much of it gets passed off. Uh, reproductions are being passed off as Republican because they don't dare try to say they're Chin Lung or Yong Chen or Kang Shi. They're just, so, oh, it's Republican and, and the great Republican myth. All right, and we'll, I'll go into it in a bit of detail, uh, explain it. All right, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time. And if you enjoy the videos, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to us here on YouTube, come over to bitamount.com, join the forum, sign up for the newsletter, um, and join us. Okay, thanks so much, and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.